Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leak Code called Find All Numbers Disappeared in an Array. It's easy. Let's get started. Given an array of integers where 1 is less than equal to a of i, less than equal to n, n being the size of the array, some elements appear twice and others appear once. Find all the elements of 1 to n inclusive that do not appear in this array. Could you do it without extra space and an o of n runtime? You may assume the return list does not count as extra space. Example, given the input 43278231, we output 5 and 6. Because we don't really see a 5 or a 6 in this input, but we do see 2 and 3 twice. So right off the bat, if we want to do something without extra space, it means that we want to somehow modify the given input nums. So let's just start off with an example. If I have nums equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. Here n equals 4, and I can see that I have every number 1 to 4 inclusive, and I don't really have anything missing. But if I now have 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, I can see that I'm missing a 5. I should have had numbers 1 to 5 inclusive since 5 is now the length of nums, but I don't have it, so 5 is missing. And I'm going to go back to the problem and read something one more time. Given an array of integers where 1 is less than equal to a of i, less than equal to n, n is the size of the array, and then find all the elements 1 to n inclusive that do not appear in this array. So we're actually bound by the numbers that we can be given. They have to be between 1 and n. And if I had every single number appearing 1, so no repetitions whatsoever, it would look like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And there would be a 1 to 1 correspondence between the numbers that were given and the positions that are available. Since we can only have 1 to n inclusive, we know that at position 1, we should have something, hopefully, 1. And position 2, we have 2. So every position will correspond to a number. But since we weren't given 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we were given 1, 2, 3, 1, we want to see if we can use this principle and somehow apply it. So what I'm actually going to do is mark the positions and the numbers that we should be getting. So for position 1, I should see a 1 somewhere in this array. And I do, it is at position 1, so I'm going to mark it. I should see a 2, and it is at position 2, so I'm going to go ahead and mark this. Same with 3, conveniently it is at position 3, I'm going to mark it. Same with 4, I see a 4. But at position 5, I don't see a 5 anywhere in this array, so it's going to remain unmarked. I do see a 1 again, but since it was already marked, I'm not going to do anything with it. Now, as I iterate through one more time, I can see that everything is marked, but this last position here, which means I'm going to return 5. Let's just go ahead and use the given example. So if our nums equaled 4, 3, 2, 7, 8, 2, 3, and 1, well, now begs the question of how to mark it, right? What if I just make every number negative in order to signify that it's been marked? This doesn't change the value, but it also doesn't use extra space. It modifies it in place. So what I'm going to do is as I iterate, I'm going to mark each corresponding position by making whatever numbers at that position negative. So iterating through nums, I see I start with a 4. That means at position 4, I have something that corresponds to it. So 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to take the 7 and I'm going to mark it. So at position 4, I'm going to have a negative number to show that I've seen a 4. Same with 3. I'm just going to go ahead and mark whatever's in 3. I see a negative 2. So as I iterate nums, I'm going to have to make sure I always take in the absolute value so I don't run into you know, reading in negative numbers. So at position two, I'm going to now mark. So position seven is now going to get marked. Same with position eight. 
Position two is already marked, so I'm not gonna change it. Position three is also marked, not gonna change it. Position one is a four, I'm gonna make that negative. Now, as we iterate one more time, we can see that everything here is less than zero except for eight and two, and they're at positions five and six, or indices four and five. And that's how I know what I'm gonna return. So I'm just gonna go ahead and code this up. So first I'm gonna start with a empty missing list because our output needs to be a list. For i in nums, now I'm iterating through, I'm going to see what position it should correspond to. So position equals, remember to get the absolute value of i, absolute value of i minus one, because we want to um, use the indices, not the positions. So yes, they correspond, but the only way we can actually modify the input is to access it through its index. So position equals index. Um, now I'm gonna see if at that position, so at nums at that position is greater than zero. That means it hasn't been marked yet. I'm gonna go ahead and mark it. So position of nums now equals whatever was there times negative one. So after this for loop, everything that we've seen should have been marked. I'm gonna iterate one more time for i in range length of nums. This time I'm going by positions or indices. And if nums of i is greater than zero, that means we haven't seen it yet. All I'm gonna do is append to missing whatever is missing. So missing dot append i plus one because right now we were dealing with indices, but we want to go back to positions. Now all that's left to do is to return missing. Let's run code. Int object not subscriptable. I should have switched these. It is nums position. Run code. Accepted, submit. And it is accepted. Now quickly just going over time space complexities. We iterate once just to mark all of our positions. So that's O of N, just one pass right there. And then we iterate one more time just to see what hasn't been marked. So overall, this is O of N and we don't use any extra space according to the problem description. And that's that. So if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.